I'm excited. I'm nervous too. I will let you know that. But guys. All right. Our scripture for today is going to be Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Come on now. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. I'd just like to share with you this morning what's on my heart right now. You know, this world, man, it can be heavy, right? Amen. It can get you down. You know, you start watching the news, you'll see stabbings and shootings and, you know, unrest all over the world. Even in our own lives. Now, don't look at your partner now. You know? <laughs> Even in our own lives, we could have problems. And quite often we... And those problems can steal our joy and our peace. Anybody know what I'm talking about out there? Yeah. 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 But praise God, there's something we can do about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have a book that instructs us how to live this life and live it peacefully. We all know what that is. That's our Bible, right? right, right. So what we need to do is spend time in that Bible. Right? Spend time in prayer mm -hmm, and fellowship with other believers like you all. You, you guys look wonderful out there, I'll tell you. Pretty. <laughs> Thank you. So we need to spend fellowship with other believers and, you know, somehow all that turmoil kind of goes away. When, when we start spending time in the Bible, yeah. when we're prayed up, right, yeah. and when we're believe, spending time with other believers, somehow, mm -hmm. somehow, I, I mean, let's look back at that verse. Somehow, mm -hmm. and the peace of God will transcend all understanding, yeah. somehow. We don't know how, but somehow we feel better after we pray in, mm -hmm. after we're in church. <laughs> After we're spending time with believers, we feel much better. Somehow. A lot of times, uh, things that we're worried about really don't amount to anything in the end. You know, We're stressed and trying to figure things out. And lo and behold, man, I didn't even need to worry about that. It turned out to be not a problem at all. You know, I have a little story. This is a long time ago, right? Long time ago. Somebody give me that long time ago. <laughs> uh, let's say it's uh, before I received that free gift. I was in a management meeting, and another manager jumped in there, and, you know, one of my peers, and I was in charge of the equipment group at that time. He comes in there just reading the riot act. I'm talking about in front of all the management about how my equipment's never up, how he can't get his product out because of my team. They're always on break. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I wanted to reach across the table, I tell you, for real. <laughs> I went home that night and I was steamed. I was kicking cats and no, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> but I was upset, you know. A little thing like this guy coming in really upset me tremendously. But when I got home, I was so mad. I, I think I picked a fight with Kim just so she'd be mad too. You know, we didn't have. To, uh, you know how it is when you're upset. Get out of my way. <clears throat> so anyway, I spent. I stayed up all night plotting and planning and taking notes on what I'm going to talk about that next meeting. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I hear it out there. You know, this guy dug into my team. So, man, I try to remember everything he said. I was scrupulous with my notes. Of course, 
three o'clock in the morning came and I'm still taking notes and I'm like, man, you need to go to bed. So it had me troubled, it had me worried, you know. No peace, no rest there. So the next morning comes and, you know, I'm heading into the meeting. I'm still looking at my notes. I'm like, I'm gonna make sure I say that. And just, I can't, you know. So I walk the meeting. Usually I'm the first to speak because I let everybody know the staff of the equipment. So I'm like, ready. <coughs> and this guy stands up, apologizes to the whole team, you know, and, and says he was mistaken. He had the wrong data. The interface that he from his leadership was poor. So when he went back and checked, of course, he didn't send out an email saying, hey, I was wrong. He waited till the next morning. But anyhow, he you know, covered it all, right? In fact, he took me to lunch that day. He was like, you know, man, I was so wrong. So here I am, right, all night long, most of the morning, stressing up. I get into the meeting and dude relieves me of it right away. I'm like, at that point in time, I was really mad, to be honest with you, because I'm like, I got all this ammunition. I got nothing to ship. But... Praise the Lord. That, that was the other guy. That was the other guy. You know, I, I was troubled. My peace was gone. I don't know if I ever really had peace before I found the Lord, but we try to pretend we're in peace. But then, somebody say, but then, I received the gift. So this is a, a year or so later, another little story. I had been going to church regularly with most of you here, had been attending men's Bible study on a regular basis. I mean, I was building up that word in myself, you know. And one day, coming out of a meeting, I was going down to my truck, and I had my little iPhone, and I'm checking the phone. and. All of a sudden, I, you know, I look up, I think I see my truck and you know, the email. And so I just hit the boop, boop thing, right? And I heard it, boop, boop. So yeah, it's opening. Get up to the truck and I'm like, what the heck? You know, I'm still trying to read my mail. At any rate, uh, I'm pulling on the handle and then I notice, what in the world is this big old dent in my truck? I'm like, how in the, somebody backed into my truck. I'm like, you got to be kidding. Well, I just sucked it up. The other Mike, before the gift, he would have went plum crazy, I'll tell you. He'd have been looking around, maybe got a bat or something, beat every window out in that parking lot. But anyway, I'm standing there and, you know, I just said, well, that's why I have insurance, so I'm not going to worry about it. So I did the little again and the door wouldn't open so I go, it must be because of the damage. So I start walking around the truck and I notice there's a hitch on the back of this truck. I hit the thing again. My truck! No dents. Beautiful. This truck, the same paint job. Had the same camper shell on it. My, but you know, what I learned from that point was, man, how did you respond, dude? I was like rejoicing in the parking lot. Hey, man, you didn't get all silly. You didn't start and stomping your feet or nothing. All you did was say, you got to be kidding me. I got insured. So that's a lesson I learned. And it's nice when you are progressing towards Christ, right? towards having Christ in your life, towards being in Christ, that you start realizing the changes that you're making. And so I, I, I like I said, got to have a little rejoice right there in the parking lot. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> disciples, excuse me, man, they, they did a lot of rejoicing too, didn't they? Yeah. They got to see miracles, right? They got to perform some miracles even, you know. But there was a point in time when it wasn't always happy there, right? These guys, uh, 
were severely beat down. They were fearful. They didn't know what was going to happen. This is on about in John, book of John, around chapter 13. Jesus starts letting them know that I'm going away. And they're like, what? I gave up everything to follow you. You're going away? And I can't come with you? What's going on? You know. You know, it wasn't enough that he told them I'm leaving. But he said, and by the way, one of you guys is going to betray me. One of you is going to betray me. And they were like, God, oh my goodness. Can you imagine how they felt? They're like looking at each other. You know, and he, and he also told Peter, he says, you're going to disown me. And so, man, can you imagine these guys? They're just beat up. They're, you know what I mean? They're feeling like there's, there's got to be. They're troubled big time. They are troubled. But with all this going on, you know what was on Jesus' mind? Them. Not that in a few days or in a little while, he's going to be on the cross. He knows that already, as we know. He knows everything, right? So he's seeing these guys, they're all downtrodden. You know, he's like, man, I must have really got him upset telling him the things. And, but, you know, Jesus, knowing that he was going to be condemned to death, you know what I mean, mocked, scourged, and then crucified. But all he was thinking about was them. You know, all he had on his mind was them. In fact, you know, Jesus rose above it all. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Yeah. You know, right in the middle of everything he's getting ready to go through, he sees them down, you know. And, and how do we, how do we know when somebody's troubled? You know, you can probably tell by their body language. You know, they're sitting there like this. And, you know. He probably looked over at Peter, and Peter was little sandals, <laughs> kicking the sand, and going, Man, the Lord just told me I'm kind of disowned. And the other disciples, they're over there pointing at each other, right? You did it. No, you're going to do it. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the camp right now. But what did Jesus do? He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Then he went on to say, I go to prepare a place for you. That's right. yeah. sure. Later he told them that where I am, there you may be also. You know what he's telling them. You're going to be in heaven with me. Despite the current situation, the drama, everything going on, despite knowing that Jesus is going to die. He's telling them, look forward. He says, look forward. Look forward to spending time with me in heaven. Not just little time. Look forward to spending eternity with me in heaven. And I think that's what sometimes we need to do when things are troubling us, when we're feeling beat up. We need to just look forward. You know, it's not going to solve all the problems, but getting in that word and understanding that word, it's going to help you at those times. How wonderful is our Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a praise. And continuing on that, down in John 14, 27, he tells them, peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not the peace of the world. Right? My peace. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your hearts be troubled. Let, your, let 
not your heart be troubled, excuse me, neither be afraid. So Jesus is, you know, continuing to lift them, continuing, even though he knows where he's headed. We can do that for our friends. And, and I think there's a blessing in that. When, when we're down, if we go bless somebody, we'll receive a blessing. And down in uh, John, uh, I think that's 1633. Yes. He said, these things I have spoken to you that in me, that in me, he said, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But in me, you will have peace. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, through him, we have peace with God. Mm -hmm. Through Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. So in him, we should have peace in our own minds, right? Oh, somebody, come on, that was good now. <laughs> through him, we have peace with God. And so in him, we have peace in our own minds. Yes. You know, I submit to you today that enjoying the peace of God lies in the remembering that we're in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. yes. Boy, that's a tough crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing. You guys are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Again, enjoy, to enjoy the peace of God, I think it lies in the remembering, in the remembering, right? And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. It helps us remember. Remembering who we are in Christ, you know? We're in Christ. What could be better? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's awesome to meditate and, and just think about what it means to be in Christ. You know, we're united to Christ, and that's awesome. We're bound to Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Let's take a look at a few scriptures that speak to that a little bit. And here, I, I'm going to need a little help from the crowd here. Somebody say, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. We were redeemed and forgiven all our sins. That's in Ephesians 1, 7. Let's read that. In him, that's in Christ, right? In him, redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace. That, according to the riches of God's grace, that unmerited favor that we get that brought us in here this morning, that woke us up. None of us deserved any of it, right? But we got it because of that unmerited favor. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, in Christ Jesus, we have eternal life. Just to end our Christ Jesus peace. <laughs> okay. Let's go check out what that means in Romans 6.23. We all know this one by heart, probably. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus. Somebody say, just in Christ Jesus. <laughs> You're good at Simon Says. Aren't you? <laughs> in Christ Jesus, we have become a new creation. What scripture is that? That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. That's great. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's like that guy that walked up on his truck that had a dent in it. That was the new guy, right? The new guy was able just to take that in stride. The old guy, I'll tell him what would have happened then. I'd probably still be paying for that. 
Somebody say, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. We are loved by God with an inseparable love. That's awesome. I love that word. Inseparable love. Where, what scripture is that? Romans 8, 38 and 39. Ooh, praise the Lord. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor high depths, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus the Lord. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. Boy. Again, I submit to you that enjoying the peace of God lies in remembering who we are in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Christ Jesus, yes. We're going to take a look again at John. A little further up in John 14 this time. He says... <clears throat> These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your hearts not be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit, it says there, brings it to, brings his words to our remembrance. Again, the peace of God lies in remembering who we are in Christ Jesus. You know, the peace of God is like a compass, right, to our souls. It leads us in the direction that the Holy Spirit intends for our lives. You know, we can take great comfort in knowing that God Almighty gave us that Holy Spirit, the internal compass, as we seek to do His will. I pray that the God of peace will be with you. Not simply peace, but God of peace will be with you. Delight yourself in the Lord. What's the rest of that one? He wants to give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> in closing. <laughs> <laughs> in closing <laughs> I pray that God of peace will be with you not simply with you not simply peace but the God of peace be with you will you trust in him and not worry will you pray about everything in your life Will you meditate on the word of God? These are the things that bring us peace. And finally, will you do what God calls you to do? Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for this day, Lord. Thank you for being here with us today, Lord. We felt your spirit. Thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. Thank you for the word that came forth. In Jesus' name, amen.